give us some, a sense. There's a lot of myths about scent. One of them, for example, happened to me when I was in London last week and I was buying some room freshener and the salesman said, here, let me uh, cleanse your no nose palate and made me smell coffee. That's a myth, evidently. This one drives me up a wall. It's the most it's ludicrous. The, the ludicrous. coffee bean <laughs> thing, yeah. You get it in every, um, every fragrance counter in the world. Uh, as far as I can tell, it started back in the late 90s at a trade show, a uh, perfume trade show. Yeah, and putting a, a pile of beans that you come to this after sampling different colognes and perfumes, and this would clear your nose. Why? I mean, the typical Arabica medium roast coffee bean has over 800 different volatile molecules in it. So why that would particularly clear your nose is beyond me. Um, a, there's a brand new paper uh, where somebody looked at the effect of coffee beans and also fresh squeezed lemon as, as a way of kind of clearing one's senses between sensory judgment uh, episodes, and there was no effect at all. In fact, nobody's ever shown that palate cleansers are real. I mean, right. the French enjoy them in the restaurants, you can have the sherbet in between courses, but um, the effect on sensory judgments is unmeasurable. So, What, what about this idea that if you're blind, like the Helen Keller effect, if you're blind you have a stronger sense of smell? This one I get all the time. As soon as you tell somebody you work in fragrance, they tell you. <laughs> you know that Helen Keller could really, really, really smell good. It's like, who is her PR people? I, know, she's been, <laughs> I think she died in 64, but this, this, uh, this message goes on resoundingly. You're, sh um, you're shattering a legend. I, Another legend I, you're about to shatter is I, Proust. He I, is known to have discovered odor memory. Yeah, he gets credit for, he gets credit for two things. One is for being the first uh, literary description of odor memory. <laughs> yeah, I usually I set it up without the red X. But... Uh, <laughs> If he's giving credit for describing it first and for also being the, uh, the first kind of scientific explanation of this, which is bogus in, in two different ways. Um, people have been describing that, that, that snap-on, sudden, instantaneous flood of, of memory linked to smell uh, for hundreds of years before. There are French antecedents. Edgar Allan Poe drew attention to the special connection of smell and memory back in the 18-teens. Uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes... Um, did it in 1851, 1858, we had um, Nathaniel Hawthorne in the House of Seven Gables talking about it. It's a very well-known thing. Uh, it was very much an idea in the air, so to speak, when Proust was writing his novel, uh, Remembrance of Things Past, which was published in 1913, at least the first volume of this, if you want to start reading it. It's like 18 volumes. Just to continue the intellectual takedown, we had a photo of Freud up, and you were going to... Uh, claim that uh, he made some false accusations about scent as well? False uh, <laughs> that he claims that we, didn't, we don't pay attention to scents as adults. Freud um, had a very negative view. Now I'm going to get into trouble because New York has more Freudian psychoanalysts per square <laughs> kilometer than any other. So not with the vegetables yet. Um, I see tomatoes coming out. <laughs> He, Freud's idea was that we, um, that healthy, normal neurotics, uh, as they grow up, <laughs> dispense the sense of smell. That only children, primitive people, and women are really into smell. Um, and in his view, it became something dispensed with later. And that we, uh, he thinks we have a poor sense of smell compared to animals. This uh, turns out not to be true, first of all, because we are as sensitive in pure concentration terms of picking up smells as most other primates and even as dogs, even when it comes to drug-type odors. And secondly, something I talked about in my book, when you look at Freud's own personal medical history, the guy uh, had a major influenza, you, know, you can lose your sense of smell from having a severe flu. He had a severe flu in his 30s, which left, was so bad it left him up with a heart arrhythmia. He had uh, cancer of the jaw, he had uh, migraine headaches that his friend Fleece tried to cure with injections of cocaine into his nasal passages. Oh my goodness. Fleece also remo removed some of the lower turbinate bones from his nose, he had repeated nasal surgery, he smokes 20 cigars a day. He was a medical nightmare. <laughs> by, his, by his early 30s, Freud was probably not smelling a thing, but he told everybody else, he assumed everybody else couldn't either. The amazing thing is that there's a Freudian term for that, and it's projection. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> 